All right, so welcome everyone. Today is the April 21st um, meeting for teaching and learning. And um, today we have uh, Jira Palooza on the agenda. So we'll be going through a number of Jiras. Um, I also encourage you if there are any particular Jiras that you're interested in that are not already on our list, or because our list is not all that long today, um, to go ahead and um, add those so that uh, we can try to get to them. Um, and uh, we, like, like we normally do, we'll start off with a few announcements. Um, some of you may have seen the announcement that went out last Monday. Sakai 20.3 was released last week. So if you're interested in, in which uh, fixes were included in that, there's a link there to the release notes that um, gives a little bit more detail. Um, so that's the, the 20.3 release. And um, we're expecting that the 21.1 will come out sometime in May. Um, we don't have a firm date on that yet, but that's kind of the target is um, probably mid-May. Um, does anybody else have any announcements that they would like to make right now? Nope. Okay. So we will go ahead and move into our JIRA discussion. So let's see. I don't see Tiffany on the call today. I think a lot of these were um, submitted by her. Let me see if we can. Oh, here's one that was not. So we'll skip down to this one. Um, this was one that we looked at previously, and I think some work was done, and then the core team kicked it back again for us to look at it now that it's been um, addressed. So why don't we look at um, SAK43155, and let me do a little screen share here just so we can all kind of look at it at the same time. Let me know if you guys are seeing my screen. Yes? Okay, great. Um, so let's see, it's this one here. And this was one that uh, University of Murcia um, did. It's, it's about the work log tab in assignments. Um, I, I believe this is a, a tab to be able to track Students um, students can track how much time they spend in an assignment. And let me scroll down a little bit. Um, the instructor view will show each time that this, like each session that the student has tracked, as well as a, a statistic of overall time. Um, Hello, and, Wilma. Yes. I am ready to make uh, some sort of presentation if you. Oh, if great. You yeah. Would you, um, would you like screen share? Yes, please. Okay, great. Let me um, stop sharing here and I will give you screen share. All right. You should be able to share your screen now. So lucky us, we have folks from Murthia here today to show us what this looks like. Uh, it's the first time that I show my screen and I don't really know how to do it. There should be a button, um, you know, where the, the mute um, and the uh, camera buttons, like to the right of that. Oh, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. I found it. I don't know if it's working. It's okay, it is. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that's not the first time that we bring this uh, development to teaching and learning call, but uh, since it's already finished the development and before uh, is reviewed uh, via the, the technical the technical part, uh, L and the the rest of the core team uh, said that this was it would be better uh, for the for, for 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 us to bring this to the to teaching and learning to make some sort of revision and maybe ask for uh, any tweaks that uh, would be would be needed 
in order to to improve the development overall okay so uh, i'm going to make um, some a brief presentation mm, we have here a student view and a teacher view okay and first and foremost what i'm going to do is to add a new assignment uh, Second teaching and learning. Whenever uh, this uh, feature is enabled in within a site, uh, each time a teacher creates uh, an assignment, uh, it's going to appear that that text or that area where you can specify the amount of time. that you estimate that the assignment is going to take. And also you can check if that uh, set, if that estimation is going to be mandatory. And after that, you post the, the assignment and it's going to appear here. The estimated part is going to be what I've stated right now and the average of submissions is going to appear here, as we see here. The student, on the other hand, will see their screens kind of changed because they will have that column uh, that records their own um, estimate time and if we go here for instance we can uh, no sorry because <laughs> that that assignment is uh, is over it still but if i go with that one i find that tab here that lets me add records to the time time log I like have here, I can delete the, them and keep adding them. And once I've made the, the, the assignment, I can say here, if I didn't input any time within the timesheet, tab, uh, I can say here that it took me five, hour, five hours or the, the amount of time that I estimate that it has taken, or what I have inputted already in the uh, timesheet tab. Once I finish my submission, <clears throat> and I go back to the list, I see here my time spent, and I can check again the timesheet, and that's more or less anything I can do from the student side. But the teacher here would see one submission, the amount of time, and if I go here, because we here we have lots of data, uh, that's how it would like for, for teachers. And once I go, for instance, here, I would see its submission and the amount of time it took to them and the grade report would also have that and uh, that's more or less i think that's everything so that's the development that's that's very nice um i i like the 
the overall workflow. I am curious though, do the instructors see the timesheet or just the total time? The total time. Okay, so they never see the timesheet even if there's like itemized things in there? Okay, let me let me check uh, in that one for instance. Student view, no, no that, that's not the, if I go to the submission, If I will go again to the submission, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I, no, mean, I, don't, I don't think instructors would need to see it necessarily, no. but just so long as the students are aware that anything they type in those comments is not going to go to the instructor. No. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Is this something that is turned on and off with a property for this yes. instance? Uh, in, in the property, you can enable the this feature for the whole instance uh, or to a specific uh, sites. Oh, OK. So you can just we, turn it on in individual that's, sites? That's our site. And we included that, that seed in the property to enable that feature within this specific uh, signature. Oh, great. If I go here, I'm going to show a student view assignment. We cannot, we cannot see. What we can see here is the total time. We cannot see assignment as student. Student view, student view, and the student view. We you don't have the the assignment tab. Okay. Um, I see a question from Adam in the chat. Um, he'd like to know if this is intended as just a timer to represent time taken, or is it a timer to force submission when the timer expires? So there was that mandatory um, option in the the setup. What does the mandatory part do? Does that uh, what, what it does is that uh, a student cannot submit an assignment within fulfilling the estimate field. Okay, so they have to spend at least as much time as estimated. Is that mm -hmm. so? If they were tracking their hours and they came up short, it w just wouldn't let them. Yeah, that's it. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't do the 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 math by its own uh, it has to be fulfilled uh, by the student so this the system doesn't um, input any time by itself okay did that answer your question adam okay good what? Does anybody else have any questions? I see Christina typing. Hmm. Is this on the experimental server for us to play with? Not yet. Okay, so this is a pull request right now. Needs yes. to be merged. This needs to be reviewed. Mm -hmm. So probably soon, Christina wants, maybe after the next core team call next week, I would guess. If not sooner. Any other questions from anyone? All right, well, great. And thank you, Jorge, for showing us the uh, the development. Um, this is this looks good. I'm sure it'll come in pleasure. handy. Yeah. Now, was there another JIRA on our list um, that Murthia had done? Because we can skip to that as well. Yes, as... yes I guess it's...
Yeah, the 45371. Okay, 45371. Do you want to demo anything on that one? It's not that I can... Mm, it doesn't lend itself it. to a demo. <laughs> I can share no. my screen if you want, or, well, no, you already no, have no. it up. There's no problem at all. Uh, uh, that's not the is that one okay mm. yes <clears throat> we have uh, some 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 sort of, of issue uh, within you can see it here in that screen if let me let me explain a, a little bit uh, from time to time when you uh, make an, an exam, usually there are students that leave the exam without mm, submitting their, their, their exams, okay? So it creates a situation where exams uh, do not, doesn't appear in the, in the submission list. That's, for teachers, those exams wouldn't appear. Uh, within the submission list. And uh, within the last mm, version of Sakai, it was included some sort of, of procedure that uh, checks those exams that uh, weren't sent correctly and uh, moves, kind of moves them to the, to the, to the, to the correct area where they are being correct. Yeah, they are checked as correctly sent. Okay. In that case, we find. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Yes, you can. Yes. Uh, in that case, the, the, that the scenario. Uh, create a, a situation in kind of inconsistent, okay? Non-consistent, be because uh, this we, we can save here in the submission the date and time where the student last saved the exam, even though uh, it might, that, that date might appear Afterwards, later, okay, uh, or we can save the date that the that that procedure checked the exam as correctly sent. Uh, in a way or another, the situation wouldn't be strictly correct because. In, in one of those situations, the student didn't send the exam, and in that area here, you can see that if the exam finished at uh, half past 20, and the exam was sent at 21, uh, some teachers would think that the exam was sent after the due date but this, this was sent automatically, okay? And uh, yesterday we were, we were um, debating about that topic and we didn't know what would be, what non-correct situation would be better. Okay, I noticed that Charles mentioned that this is a confusing in, in, um, issue for instructors. Charles, do you want to elaborate on that a little? So we, we've had this come up a few times ourselves where, you know, the <clears throat> because it's showing the last saved date and time, but then it shows as an auto submit. Um, people are wondering, well, why did it auto submit at a time when, you know, the student hadn't run up against the timer, they hadn't run up against the due date. It, it's very confusing because it's really misleading. Um, 
because for everything else, I mean, it's it's that column shows when they the students submitted. Um, so there's inconsistent information showing up in that column. Um, it just throws instructors off. It even throws me off sometimes if I'm not thinking about it right. And you know, it, it took us a while to figure out that that this was happening. Um, actually, we we got some assistance from Longsight as as far as kind of trying to interpret what was going on with these the the um, entries in that submissions column. So yeah, it it's definitely makes for oddities in trying to figure out, you know, when when a student has some kind of an issue, what's okay, what is going on with this? Why is it showing it's it submitted at X time when when actually it submitted at the due date on auto submit. So in our institution we launch this procedure uh, in a non specific time within the following hour after the due date, okay? So it's not sent exactly at the due date. Right, because that's, we actually just changed that on our system because originally the auto submit job runs once an hour and it was running at XX59, so mm -hmm. one minute before the hour. Anything that was due on the hour that auto submitted wouldn't actually go through the process of being submitted until a whole hour, almost a whole hour later. So we actually just changed our setting to, to so that the auto submit runs at five minutes after the hour instead of mm -hmm. one minute before, because we, we actually had alongside do a query to find out that over half of, of our assessments are due on the hour. So we figured, okay, if it's if it does the auto submit at five after, then then there's not as many hanging submissions sitting out there. But that last saved thing is just really confusing, because it's just completely different information from everything else that's in the in that column. That that everything in that everything in that column should be labeled exact either should be the same thing either when it was submitted. Or it should be labeled either submitted or last saved, one or the other. It has to you. There has to be consistency for the instructors to see what's going on. That's just our suggestion here. Yeah. Uh, here you can see it here that we suggest that that column should be tagged this way. And in, for you to know that uh, this information is just uh, it's all the same. When a student submits the 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 assignment or, or the exam, sorry, mm, the date that it is stored within that database column is that date. Uh, when, just when the student submitted the exam, and also it it is stored mm, any time that the student saves the exam. Okay. It doesn't matter that if the student submits it or not. Any time that the student saves is going to be stored here. But that row wouldn't show, so wouldn't be shown if there's not a submission. Okay. What we do is to enable that field and to to express here in the bottom that it was submitted automatically. Yeah, in Spanish it said MB automatico, which means uh, automatic uh, submission. But we, what, what we say is that that data uh, doesn't match with that other one because in, in the event love, with its, with its, which is that one, uh, the, the, the data that is stored is awesome. Hello? We can still hear you. Okay. 
the, the data that is stored here. I, I don't know when when did you, did you Wait, know? I, yeah, yeah, we, we heard you. I think we heard everything. The, <laughs> um, so know. basically, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, so basically, what you've proposed is to add labels to the data in that column saying what it is, um, whether it's the auto submit or the student save or um, anything else, or is it only labeling the auto submits? Yes, what we can do is, is add in here another column to, mm -hmm. to, to, to store any, only uh, those um, rows that are that that weren't sent correctly and but we don't think that this go is going to be uh, user friendly because it's going to have a lot a whole lot of uh, empty entries and um, it's going to be better to uh, use data space uh, for spacing or, or clarifying the data. And if we have just a column uh, for that kind of data, uh, what we think that is better uh, to do is to change the, the labeling. Um, but yesterday we, we came to the conclusion to bring that development here for you to discuss. So um, so those of you on the call who've experienced this, do you have a preference over um, how the user display could be made more understandable? <laughs> So I, I think I would say that I'd, I'd like to see a one column that has the submission date time and another column that shows when it was last saved. And would you want the last save column to indicate if it's an auto submit save or a student save? Uh, if that could be done, sure, why not? Yeah, it looks like Heather's agreeing that auto submit items should be labeled auto submitted. Yep. Definitely. Jorge, does that make sense? Yes. If anyone has any other suggestion. Anybody else? Everybody's happy with a, an additional column for last save? I see Adam typing. I, I think that would help clarify it a lot because I've had quite a few instructors ask me, it's like, okay, why does this say it was submitted at 4 a.m. the day after the test? Mm -hmm. Which is when our auto submit job runs. It's like, I'd rather just have it make it obvious to the instructors when it's a difference between when the student submitted it and when a job running in the background submitted it. Right. So this is definitely a very needed feature. <laughs> All right, so I can add a comment on the um, the JIRA to that effect, just saying that we talked about it and um, what the consensus was on the call. Um, and Adam is agreeing that an additional column would explain what the issue is. So, um, so that's good. Hopefully it won't be too cumbersome if we keep it relatively brief, the information that's in there, even if it's blank for most people. Um, I think it's, it's still useful to have it separated out. Um, okay, any other thoughts on this one? Great. All right. Thank you, Jorge. Appreciate Welcome. you taking us through those. All right. So done. you're done. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I will.
take back screen share. And there we go. All right. You guys seeing my screen yet? There we go. Um, all right. So let's see. The next one on the list is uh, 45339. And let's see what that is. This is an assignments feature request for improved notification options on posting an assignment. This is one that Tiffany had suggested. Yeah, she agenda. just she requested that one at, uh, on the 9th to have that added. Um, it's a repeat. He says it was from a TNL discussion we had last month regarding notifications for assignment assessment open dates. Oh, so we to allow the yeah. It doesn't have yeah. a label on it. Usually we label them. Right. So I think this is one that, that we talked about and then Stephen uh, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany Stull um, created the the Jira, but then wasn't sh then she says in, in the note in, in Slack that she's she was not sure when she got into creating it what the appropriate options would be for assignments to avoid having a ton of extraneous options. Ah, okay. So maybe we should just kind of look at these options here and see if all of them are necessary. Oh yeah, I remember this one about when it goes out. Um, let's see. We'd like to have several notification options when publishing. Um, the first would be not send email at all, which is the default. The second being send email notification about the due date now to participants who've opted for it. Send email notification about the open date now to all participants. Send email notification to all participants when the assignment is open. Um, send email notification about open date to all participants at a specific date. Uh, if selected, the date field appears and it should be pre-populated with the open date. Um, She wants to know if we think the low priority announcement option is needed for every possible new option. Wow, that seems like a lot of options. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it, if, if I were to sketch this out in my mind right now, what I would see is a checkbox that says send an announcement and then below the checkbox have a series of radio buttons where the ra first radio button would be now, the second mm -hmm. radio button would be when the assignment opens and the third radio button would be on a specific date and then you can use the date picker to specify the date and time that the notification goes out right yeah i don't know that we need the um participants who've opted in for it thing that's i think mirroring some of the announcement features where you can choose the priority of you know the announcement um do we need a priority for this if there was what i would suggest is having almost like a second set of radio buttons below that you know if it's you know just mark high priority low priority or whichever option you've got selected mm -hmm. Well, I, I would make that a drop down like it is. To match assignments or announcements? Yeah, or everywhere else that that, that notification thing is. All right. So we don't need these. These two are essentially the same thing, the send and now, because we're taking the priority out of it. The participants who've opted in and 
all participants is really just the high low priority. So we have don't send, send now, send when open, and then send upon a specific date. And then Here's, separately would be the priority option. Here's a, uh, another question. Are these all mutually exclusive? That's a good question. In other words, I might want to send a notification now if it's at the beginning of the semester but if this is an assignment that's not going to come due until three quarters of the come open until three quarters of the way through the semester maybe i want to send another notification when it opens when it actually opens what at that time that it opens Ugh, i can't talk today <clears throat> So it would be check boxes as opposed to radio buttons. Potentially. Is there times though when an instructor would want something right at the beginning and then when it opens or? Oh, well, that's that's what I'm thinking that that it might be nice to have a reminder that oh hey wait remember that big midterm project that you have to do? It's open now. <laughs> Told you about it at the beginning of the semester and when it was going to open up. But now I'm telling you again that it's open now and you should start working on it. I'd, I'd argue the best practice in that would actually be to send out a instructor created announcement that could actually provide some details hmm. rather than just this assignment is now open. That's what I would tell my instructors if they wanted to do that. Hmm. Well, Fair enough. a number of the details would be actually within the assignment as they set it up. So I could see an argument for an automatic uh, reminder. Do we know what the message looks like? I mean, does it just have the assignment? description and then uh, this assignment will be open on such and such a date is that what it says i think it just has pretty much the title and the open date it does not have um any of the information that's in the description okay so it seems kind of pointless to know hey this is going to be open in two weeks but we're not going to tell you anything else about it <laughs> You can wait two weeks to you also find out. Do the assignment, but if the assignment isn't open yet, that's kind of a yeah. Thing. Well, unless you've turned on view. Yeah, I don't know. I think I I agree with Christina. If it were me, I would just want them to know when it is actually open as opposed to now and then again later. Because um, I think sometimes okay. students get too much information and then they stop stop listening. Um, fine. I'm fine with that. It, it just occurred to me that, and I thought I'd throw it out there, but you can convince me the other direction, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to be persuaded if others feel strongly about it, but that would be my preference just off the cuff. I'm okay with that. Any other opinions? All right, so I will again add a note um, after the call on this one just so you don't have to all sit there while I type it out. Um, and, uh, and and I'll add the label that we reviewed it, and then I'll put the um, the three options that we um, decided on for sending mail. So uh, send it now, send it when it's open, or send it um, on a specific date, and then a separate priority selection. Um, all right, cool. So let's move on. Um, 
Our next one is a Samago feature request to improve assignment type functionality to if need to be continued. I'm going to wait since she's not here today. And this was one I think we started talking about and it ended up being quite complicated and we didn't have time during the call. So we will come back to that one. Um, all right. And um, this next one is a lessons feature request also from Tiffany. Does anybody um, on the call today have either of these two JIRAs that you suggested? I'd rather, if there's one that someone here today suggested, I'd rather do that one first. Yes, I brought the upper one. This one, 45353? Yes. Okay, let's talk about that one then. All right, so that's the Samago current workflow for answer markers for fill in the blank is confusing. So um, do you want to talk us through this one? I don't have much info because Jesus told me that uh, the, that that's not the first time that you see that and uh, you only need it to, to review it and uh, write down in the bottom of the Jira any suggestion that you might have. Okay. I don't. I, I don't really know the nitty gritty of, of this Jira. Okay, so let's just kind of read it through. So in tests and quizzes, um, when you go to add a question for fill in the blank, um, let's see. I'm gonna go down to the description to see if it. Okay. Um, Currently, when a user arrives on the page, the answer markers field is shown to them with no explanation as to what it means or why you would want to edit it. The vast majority of users do not need to enable custom markers. Having the, field, the text field displayed to them is confusing. Um, the option should be available with a radio button where an explanation to its use case is provided. If and only if the user selects custom, for the field markers, should they be presented to the field to edit these markers? So let's look at the screenshots. All right, so it's this stuff here for custom markers. Um, so there's the, I guess, custom option selected, and then this would appear. Um, let's see, this is currently what shows up. So I think this is the suggested improvement. And then I think there was one more. Yeah, this is before it's selected. So here's the default. Um, and that's with default selected. I think that makes sense to me. That's kind of progressive release. It's not giving you things that you may not need. And things that would just confuse your ordinary users. Right. Do other Agreed. Look like this one? Yes. Okay, cool. So we agree that this is a good improvement. Um, oh, I didn't read down. Let's see. Okay, yeah, there was a little bit of discussion in the comments about um, whether or not the curly brackets are standard, but I, I think it makes more sense to not have them shown um, unless you need to change it. I'm so. going to disagree with Sam's comment. I think having a field that instructors might think they have to fill in or change things is more mm -hmm. complex and confusing than a radio button that says, do you want to use the default or custom? Yeah, I, I totally yep. agree with that. With the explanation that you would use the custom really only if you needed to use the curly brackets in your answer. Right. Or in the question itself, really, because if you had it in other text, 
you wouldn't want that being treated as the answer. Yeah, because it tells you down here what they are. And that's only if you need to change them. So, yeah, I, I don't think it adds complexity. I think it removes complexity to have it hidden if unless you need to change it. Yep. So, okay, so I will um, also mark that one uh, that we looked at it and we agree with the suggestion. Okay. Um, let's see. Back later. Okay. Uh, let's see. I lost track here. Oh, and I wrote, wrote it on the wrong one. Stuff was moving around on me. <laughs> okay, so it moved up. Um, so the Sorry. lessons one we've not talked about. Um, but thank you for taking notes, Charles, so I remember what to write later when I go back. All right, so let's uh, look at this one. This is the open error warning in managed tools tool order when removing lessons pages with sub pages or LTI content. Um, let's see, we've had a few cases where instructors inadvertently deleted large amounts of lessons content by removing a top level page that included sub pages. In one case, 30 subpages and LTI links to gradebook were involved, and the LTI links to gradebook can be irreparably broken. Um, it would be nice if additional warnings could be thrown up on attempting to remove lessons via site info managed tools or site info tool order, similar to the following, where X is the number of subpages attached to the parent page. Warning, removing the lessons page named whatever will permanently delete X subpages and all their content. Is that true? I don't think lessons permanently deletes subpages until you go into the index of pages and delete them again. That's what I thought, but I also wasn't sure if the LTI links with the gradebook were different. Yeah. Pages. yeah, the gradebook might be an issue. The LTI links, if it's just a, a but the sub page isn't deleted. The LTI uh, links on the sub page, I don't know what happens to those. I'm not sure. Yeah, because I thought that when you deleted anything in lessons, it's not really gone. It's still in the index of pages, and it just kind of hangs around until you delete it from the index. So if you needed to add it back in, you could. Um, but I don't know what happens to LTI links if they're affected at all by that process. Are you testing that, Charles? I am. How could you tell? <laughs> you just sounded like you were testing it. <laughs> on, where's delete? No, the subpage does does show up in the index list. Okay. Yeah, so I I don't agree that this um, description is accurate. 
So I'll, I'll add something in the comments saying that we need a little more explanation here because I don't think that that's how it works. So maybe she's referring to something else. Maybe the LTI links get messed up when that happens. I don't know. But, um, but they're not permanently deleted um, unless they have a custom set up at, at UVA, perhaps. And, well, unless, hold on, let me try one other thing. Let me check one thing. Um, okay, so if I go back to that, more tools, add more pages, existing page, use. No, it's it's still there. Okay, no, never mind. Yeah, you can add it back in. Yeah, when I I well, what I wanted to see was if I added the main page back in, does the sub page come back? And it did. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so I'll add a note to that effect on here, and it looks like um, let's see, it's ten. 54. So we're almost at the end of the hour. I don't really think we have enough time to effectively do another JIRA, but I, I appreciate you guys um, showing up and talking about the ones that we did go over today. Um, next time um, for the May 5th meeting, which is our next meeting, um, we're going to have uh, a discussion about teaching awards. Ian Dolphin asked to um, be added to the agenda for that day. And uh, he wants to talk a little bit about sort of evolving the Atlas um, award process. So um, that's going to be our um, topic du jour on the 5th. Um, but if anybody has any JIRAs that they would like to add, feel free to let um, Charles or I know, and we'll be happy to put them on the list. Usually if we have a few minutes at the end of the call, we'll take take a JIRA or two. Um, or if um, if not, then the next time we have a JIRA Palooza, that'll be the first ones in the list. So thank you, everybody. And I will see you in, um, well, in May. <laughs> I'm sure I'll talk to you before then. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Wilma. Wilma, do you have one second? Or are you already disconnected? I think she's gone. Yep. All right. So long. Have a good week. You are currently the only person in this conference.